Please excuse a short advertisement before I proceed. I am offering an audio course in conservation biology. Details are at the link in the description immediately beneath this video. As usual, links to the other articles I mentioned in this video are included in the attendant blog post at GuyMcPherson.com. I have reported on the dire impacts of global peak oil at GuyMcPherson.com for many years. My reports from August 2007 onward indicate the potential for peak oil to terminate industrial civilization. Without further investigation, terminating industrial civilization and its horrors seems like a good idea. However, that aforementioned further investigation leads directly to the best kept secret in climate science, the aerosol masking effect. Once I discovered the importance of aerosol masking, I realized that even a relatively minor reduction in industrial activity will trigger a rapid rise in regional temperature and then in global temperature. As longtime climate science researcher and professor James Hansen frequently points out, the aerosols produced by industrial activity fall out of the atmosphere in about five days. Indeed, peer-reviewed research resulting from the loss of aerosol masking associated with the ongoing pandemic indicates regional increases in temperature have already led to regional increases in precipitation. You can find the results quite easily with a simple internet search. Fortunately, these impacts have not yet gone global, Rather, they have remained regional in scope. In other words, industrial civilization has its horrors. On the other hand, terminating industrial civilization will almost certainly lead to the loss of all life on Earth, either through loss of aerosol masking or else via the implosion of nuclear power facilities. I don't know about you, but I'd rather not. I do know about the fools at Deep Green Resistance and their obvious desire to terminate industrial civilization even though they know doing so will cause the loss of all life on Earth. With that said, the goal of this video is to provide a brief overview of peak oil and its likely consequences. Contrary to comments on the troll farm known as YouTube, peak oil does not mean we're running out of oil any more than death of an individual begins shortly after birth. Rather, peak oil means we have reached the halfway point in our ability to extract oil. From the online Macmillan Dictionary comes this simple definition for peak oil. Quote, the time when the production of oil in the world is at its highest level. End quote. Actually, I disagree slightly with this definition. The world is not producing and has not produced a significant quantity of oil during the last several million years. Rather, humans have extracted oil and other fossil fuels that were created millions of years ago as a result of algae, plants, and other organisms being exposed to high temperature and high pressure. As a result, references to peak oil refer to the human ability to extract oil, not the actual production or creation of that oil, which is beyond the human realm. But details. As I have already reported in this space, I had a paper published in the peer-reviewed journal Bulletin of Science, Technology, and Society on April 16, 2008. As a result of the long time required for peer review and publication, the article was written in late 2006. It was titled, Implications of Peak Oil for Industrialized Societies. Here's the abstract from the peer-reviewed paper, which begins by citing the U.S. Energy Information Administration's assessment of conventional oil, sometimes called crude plus condensate. Quote, the world passed the halfway point of oil supply in 2005. World demand for oil likely will severely outstrip supply in 2008, leading to increasingly higher oil prices. Consequences are likely to include increasing gasoline prices, rapidly increasing inflation, and subsequently a series of increasingly severe recessions followed by a worldwide economic depression. Consequences may include, particularly in industrialized countries such as the United States, massive unemployment, economic collapse, and chaos. End quote. The second sentence of the abstract again reads, quote, World demand for oil likely will severely outstrip supply in 2008, leading to increasingly higher oil prices. End quote. We were correct in the conclusion we reached in this peer-reviewed paper. Gasoline prices rose, as did inflation. The so-called Great Recession followed. It's unclear to me whether the Great Recession has ended or whether, instead, we find ourselves in, quote, a series of increasingly severe recessions, end quote. Either way, the economic situation is dire, as I have indicated with dozens of videos in this space. Remember, the fastest way to destroy all life on Earth 
is to dismantle industrial civilization. Many years after publication of the aforementioned peer-reviewed paper, I posted a video in this space about the ongoing consequences of passing the world peak in oil extraction. That video was titled, Science Snippets, PO plus AICC equals zero habitat. And it was posted on the Nature Bass Life's YouTube channel and also at GuyMcPherson.com on April 10th, 2022. In the blog post and the video, I pointed out that the Hirsch Report was published in February 2005. It was created by Robert L. Hirsch, entitled Peaking of World Oil Production, Impacts, Mitigation, and Risk Assessment. Robert Hirsch created the report upon request from the United States Department of Energy. The Hirsch Report concluded we would need 20 years' notice to prepare for world peak oil. We might be able to patch together something resembling civilization on only 10 years' notice if we throw everything we have at the issue in a mad scramble. So, of course, we scrambled. Digging deeper and deeper, chasing increasingly expensive oil, we, we pursued hydrofracturing until it became called fracking, otherwise known as business as usual. Chasing increasingly expensive oil also brought us the aptly named Deepwater Horizon disaster for five full months in 2010. Remember, the Hirsch Report was published in February 2005. Not surprisingly, the mad scramble continues. We are trying to cobble together solutions that address the suicidal idea of infinite growth on a finite planet. Enter the notion of renewable energy, which is sometimes called green energy, although it is neither renewable nor green. Wind turbines and photovoltaic solar panels require rare earth minerals for their construction. These minerals are called rare earth minerals for a reason. Trying to power the heat engine we call civilization with finite fossil fuels is insane. Trying to power the heat engine we call civilization with rare minerals is a few steps beyond crazy. A reminder, the Hirsch Report was published in February 2005, more than 17 years ago. We've been warned. Our response to dozens of warnings throughout history became the unspoken model of civilized life. Must go faster. As I pointed out years ago at GuyMcPherson.com, conventional oil peaked in the United States in 1970. It was clear the U.S. was no longer the world's swing supplier in 1972. Shortly thereafter, OPEC was formed to ensure that political power remained with the most important material ever discovered for sustaining civilization, oil. Among the consequences of the U.S. passing peak oil were rising prices of gasoline, disruptions in the supply of petroleum products, and a severe recession. One result was called stagflation. Stagflation refers to economic growth that is weak or non-existent, along with rising prices. Thus, a recession was accompanied by inflation. It proved very difficult to successfully address in the 1970s. I doubt it'll be easier this time around. Another economic outcome during the early 1970s was disruptions in supply that led to gas stations selling fuel based on the license plate number of the customer. Odd numbers were sold fuel on some days, even numbers on other days. Fifty years later, it is difficult to imagine not being able to buy anything one wants at any time. The ongoing pandemic has helped a few people figure out that dairy products and toilet paper don't originate at grocery stores. In this country, where ready access to petroleum is viewed as a right rather than a privilege, I doubt we fare well in the years to come. Politicians in the divided states of America are responding with their go-to reaction now that the tools of distraction and division have worn thin. War, as usual, is the political response. The Washington Post gives a clue about our future with an article published June 7, 2022, titled World Bank Warns Global Economy May Suffer 1970s-Style Stagflation. The story leads with, quote, the global economy may be headed for years of weak growth and rising prices, a toxic combination that will test the stability of dozens of countries still struggling to rebound from the pandemic, the World Bank warned Tuesday. End quote. The following paragraph offers a dire economic outlook. Quote, Not since the 1970s, when twin oil shocks sapped growth and lifted prices, giving rise to the malady known as stagflation, has the global economy faced such a challenge. End quote. The Post points out that, quote, this will be the sharpest slump after an initial post-recession rebound that the global economy has suffered in more than 80 years, the bank said. 
and the situation could get even worse if the Ukraine war fractures global trade and financial networks or soaring food prices spark social unrest in importing countries. End quote. A week before the story was published in the Washington Post, Business Insider ran a story with this headline on May 31st, 2022. IEA chief warns of summer fuel shortages and a triple energy crisis that will outstrip the oil shocks of the 1970s. The story points out that, quote, the International Energy Agency chief Fatih Biral has warned of a triple energy crisis that could be much bigger and longer lasting than the 1970s, end quote. The story goes on to summarize the paper with these quotes from Birol. Quote, the U.S. and Europe face fuel shortages as summer vacations get underway, the head of the IEA told Der Spiegel. Next quote, Fatir Biral warns of potential diesel, petrol, and kerosene shortages and said the current energy crisis was worse than the 1970s. Final quote to summarize the paper, we have an oil crisis, a gas crisis, and an electricity crisis simultaneously, he said. Wedged between the stories in Business Insider and the Washington Post comes this headline from CNN Business. Three reasons high oil prices are here to stay. The story was published June 3, 2022. Here's the lead. Quote, oil prices have roared back to about where they were in the early days of the Ukraine war, and there's no prospect of significant relief for drivers and businesses anytime soon. End quote. The following sentence doesn't offer good, new- good news either. Quote, the price of Brent crude, the global benchmark, shot up past $124 a barrel earlier this week, its highest level since early March, after the European Union announced it would slash 90% of its Russian oil imports by the end of this year. End quote. Back to that peer-reviewed paper I co-authored for the journal Bulletin of Science, Technology, and Society. Published on April 16, 2008, paper was titled Implications of Peak Oil for Industrialized Societies. Of course, the paper was written long before April 16, 2008. The final sentence of this peer-reviewed paper reads, quote, Do we possess sufficient courage, compassion, and creativity to stave off chaos in defense of a just, sustainable civilization? End quote. In other words, I have been posing this question in various forms to anybody who will listen for a very long time. I still think it bears consideration. Thanks for watching, liking, and subscribing to this channel. If you subscribe, please click the bell so you will be notified about future videos. Feel free to share this video, become a member of this channel for additional perks at as little as 99 cents per month. Mostly though, thanks for watching.